بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد الدعاء والصلاة المؤمن it is a weapon for a believer somebody came to Ibrahim and Adham and asked him that why is it that we make dua yet our duas are not accepted he said you know Allah yet you disobey him you know the Nabi yet you don't follow the Sunnah you know about Quran yet you don't act upon it you eat you take benefit from the bounties of Allah, yet you don't express gratitude. You know about Jannah, yet you don't strive for it. You know about Jahannam, yet you don't run away from it. You know about Iblis, Shaitan in his plotting, yet you don't confront him, fight him, yet you obey him. You know about death and you don't prepare for it. You bury your dead and you don't take lesson. And you've left introspecting and checking your own faults and you're busy with, your, with the faults of makhluk, everybody else. So dua, we need to strive to get it right. Malani Yasmi say that when Allah comes to giving, even the roof will shut, Allah will give you so much that your houses cannot manage to handle it. And there was a story of a king who went hunting, Malani Yasmi used to give this incident as an example and he got lost and there was no chance of survival and he came to the house of somebody and that person helped him, assisted him and when he got back to normal he returned to the city but he told the Bedouin that if ever you're in the city come see me. So it so happened one day the Bedouin was in the city, he went to the king and said I'm back, you promised me something. So the king remembered and he told his courtiers that take him to the outskirts of the city and give him so many drums of gold and diamonds and jewels. So you know, the thieves heard about it and they said they will follow him. So when he got to the outskirts of the city, he said, Ya Allah, you know what? I did what I had to do, now you must do what you have to do. Risk is in your hands. Ya Allah, I'm not going to take the taklif to carry all of these drums here. And he went back. He was a better one, didn't know better. So the thieves came. And they seen the drums, they were following him and they realized, you know what, let's go steal it. And they look inside, they seen serpents. So they were shocked, they said, this man has tricked us, we will trick him. So they tracked him and they tracked his house and they plotted that in the evening we're going to throw all the snakes into his house. So they made a hole in the roof and they started throwing one drum after another and this man was sleeping and he seen all the gold and the diamonds and the jewels falling in his house and he said Ya Allah thank you you did your job and the thieves were happy that the snakes are going to kill this man and they left so when Allah comes to give in he will shatter the roof Abdullah ibn Mubarak says once I came to Medina in the time when there was a drought and people went for Salat al istisqa and I went with them and I en route, I, I was next to a, a black individual who had two pieces of clothing. He wasn't dressed well. And he said next to me, and he was making dua, he said, Ya Allah, through the sins of insan, you have caused this condition. And you know the wisdom and hikmah you wanted to teach us a lesson. As'aluka ya haliman, O oh my Allah. Oh, that great Allah, please send rain, please send rain, Asa, Asa, please send rain. Abdullah ibn Mubarak says he carried on saying Asa, Asa, until the clouds gathered. And وَأَقْبَلَ الْمَطَرْ مِنْ كُلِّ جَانِبٍ From every direction rain fell. So Abdullah ibn Mubarak says, I came to Fudail bin Ayaz, who was the, the Abid al-Haramain. And he said, I see you very grieved. He said, Amrun sabaqana ilayhi ghayruna. Somebody beat us to it. Somebody's dua beat us to it. So he said, I narrated him to sorry of this black person. Fasah al fudail He screamed, shrieked, and fell unconscious. So dua in the power of dua. Now when a person doesn't get what he wants, he pretends that he doesn't need it. Because we don't have yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to ask Allah with yaqeen that our du'as will be accepted. They say like the fox once came to an orchard and seen grapes. 
and he looked for the farmer and he seen the farmer wasn't there. So he quickly ran and jumped for the grapes. He couldn't reach it. He said, let me jump higher. He took a longer run, third time, fourth time, fourth time. It was getting dark all day. He tried and he became angry. His legs were injured and he stopped trying. As he walked away, he said, I don't really want those grapes. I'm sure they're very bitter. So when it suits us and we don't get what we want, we pretend it's not worth having. Whereas the people of the dunya, if they've learned how to take from people, from makhluk, then we, ashraful makhluqat, the creation of Allah that's supposed to be taken from Allah, we still, till today, haven't learned to take from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As they had two beggars, a Jew and a Christian, was sitting outside a church collecting money. As the people left the church, most people gave the Christian. And sometimes they would take double, triple, four times the amount just to spite the Jew. So in the congregation left, the father seen the two beggars outside. The priest came outside and said that, you know, you people are sitting outside a church. He addressed the Jew. And he said, you know what? You're not going to get anything here. I suppose you upgrade your strategy. So the Jew looked at the Christian and said, Mo, look at this pastor. He's trying to teach us how to beg for money. He's trying to teach us how to beg for money. They were friends. It was all planned. They can take from makhluk. We can't take from Allah. So we should look at ourselves and introspect. Am I the problem? What am I doing wrong? He said, boy, he was about to be sentenced for killing his parents. And he begs the judge to spare his life. So the judge asks him, give me one good reason. I should show you mercy. So the boy replied, I'm an orphan, your honor. I'm an orphan, your honor. The problem started with you and you still want to use it as an excuse. So the problem is with us, it's with me. And we blame it on everybody else. We blame it on know the Billah and Allah as well for our conditions. So we need to learn to make effort in the right direction and strive. So one was the time where Dua was accepted, then the place where Dua is accepted. So certain places, where will Allah accept my Dua? Whether I'm in the Mataf, whether I'm in the Multazam, whether I'm in the Hajri Aswad, I'm, I'm seeing the Baytullah for the first time. I'm in the Mizab e Rahma, in the Hadim, the Hajri Aswad, Rukne Yamani, Maqam e Ibrahim, by the Zamzam Wal, Safa, Marwa, Milain Akhdarain, Muzdalifa, Mina, Arafat, at the Jamarat. Different places our Adiya are accepted. Even Mulali Qadrah has mentioned Dari Arkam, the cave of Hira Thawr, Masjid al Nabawi, in front of the Rail Rawda, Masjid al Quba, Masjid al Fatah, etc., etc., etc. We need to find those places where our dua will be accepted because we need to get everything right and we have this chance then we need to find people whose dua are accepted so you can request somebody to make dua for you like Abu Amir asked Abu Musa to give salam to Nabi alayhi salam and make dua in maghfirat then you can make and request somebody to make dua for barakat like the dua of Abu Rayyallahu anhu when he went with some kajur and Nabi Alayhi Salaam made dua and he says in every era I just put my hand in that purse and kajur used to come out again and again and again until it was lost. So people whose dua accepted, number one, a Muslim brother li akhi bi al ghaib when your brother is not there and you make dua for him ma min abdim muslim in yadu li akhi you make dua for your brother except the angel says walaka bi mithli that you will get exactly what you're asking for him. So it's a dua for oneself. Then dua al madhlum. What taqi da'wat al madhlum. An oppressed person's dua is accepted. Be careful. There's no barrier between an oppressed person and Allah. Then number three, da'wat al walid li waladihi. A parent who's making dua for his children or making bad dua. It is accepted. Da'watul walid li waladihi. Thalathu da'watun yustajab. La shakka fihinna definitely. Number four, da'watul musafir. 
Number five, the dua of a child for their parents. Oh, waladin salihin yad'u lahu. Number six, da'watu sa'im in the fitrihi. A fasting person, his dua is accepted, especially at the time of iftar. Number seven, da'watul imam, a, a just ruler. Number eight, da'watul Number nine, da'watul mustarm, a person who is in difficulties and hardships and in need. Ammay yujibul mustarra idha da'ahu. Number ten, da'watul haj. Eleven, mu'tamir. Twelve, al ghazi fi sabilillah. A person who is on Hajj, on Umrah, any person who is out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَسَأَلُوهُ فَعَطَاهُمْ When they ask Allah, the dua is accepted. Then a dhakir kathira, a person who makes dhikr excessively. ثَلَاثَةٌ لَا يُرَدُّ دُعَاؤُهُمْ Three people's duas are not rejected. A dhakir lillahi kathira, a person who remembers Allah excessively. Number 14, a marid, a person who is sick, إِذَا دَخَلْتَ عَلَى مَرِيدٍ فَمُرْهُ أَيَدْعُوا لَكَ فَإِنَّ دُعَاهُ كَدُعَاءِ اللَّهِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ كَدُعَاءِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ When you go to a sick person, ask him to make dua for you. فَإِنَّ دُعَاءَهُ كَدُعَاءِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Because his dua is like the dua of the malaika. Number 15, an elderly person, a grey-haired person. يَسْتَحِي مِنْ ذِي الشَّيْءِ But in Muslim, that a person who has grey hair and who has gone old for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَنْ يَسْأَلَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا Allah feels shy that he asks Allah and Allah does not grant him. Likewise, children's dua. So when you go for Salat al-Istisqa to seek for rain, we take the elderly people and children with us because through their sadaqa our dua may be accepted. Then a scholar who is reciting the Quran, who is a hamil Quran, who has this Quran in his chest, a alim of deen, inna li hamil al-Quran. For a person who is a scholar of dua, uh, of, of deen, mustajaba yad'u biha fayastajib lahu. That when he makes dua, his dua will be accepted. And dua ul muhsani ilayhi lil muhsin la yuraddu. That when you do good to somebody and that person who good was done upon, then the dua is accepted as well. Now we should never ever lose hope and think that I'm making dua and there's a loss. Apparently it's not been accepted. Otherwise the hadith is clear. Ma min muslimin yadu bi da'watin laysa fi ithm. That you make dua properly, no sin, no guna, you fulfill the requirements. Either accept, his dua will be accepted. Or Allah will keep it for him in akhirah. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will repel some evil that was going to come to him, calamity. Kalu. Sahaba said, إِذَنْ نُكْثِرُ Then we'll make a lot of dua. Nabi alayhi salam said, Allahu akthar. Allah will give more than what you can ask. Ibn Hajar Askalani. In his Fatul Bari has mentioned that Kullu, every dua you stajab lahu, every dua you make is accepted, but in different forms. Whether Allah gives it you immediately, whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it in another form. Ma ala al ardi Muslim yad'u bi da'watin illa atahu Allah iyaha. That any dua that you make, Allah will grant it to you, but in different forms, so we should never lose hope. Number one, Allah is Malik. La yus'alu amma yaf'alu, la yus'alu amma yaf'alu wa hum yus'alun. Nobody can question us Allah and ask Him why, what, what, when, how. This is in the hands of Allah, so we'll leave it to Allah. Secondly, it is a delayed response from Allah because it's a tribulation. And tribulations sometimes are good for us, which we don't know. وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you with good and evil. So we don't know how long this test needs to remain with us. Number three, حِكْمَةٌ بَالِغَةٌ It is hikmat and wisdom. Allah knows He is most wise. All encompassing ilm remains with Him. So leave it to Allah. Sufyan Thawri. Rahimahullah used to say, when Allah withholds, He actually gives. 
Why? Because he has not withheld on account of Allah's miserliness or stinginess, na'udhu billah, but he looked at the hikmah and wisdom of his servant. So actually, when he is withholding, he is looking at the excellence and the perfection for his servant. Number four, one does not know the result of his dua because we're not alim a'lam. We're not all knowing. We don't know what's good for us. وَأَمَّا الْغُلَامِ فَكَانَ أَبَوَاهُ مُؤْمِنَيْنِ فَخَشِينَ When Musa was with Khidr and that boy was killed, it's teaching us a lesson. We don't know everything, although externally there was harm, but internally there was a benefit. So hand the matter over Allah. Then number five, this dua that I'm asking for, I don't know if it's going to cause harm to me. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ آهَدَ اللَّهِ لَإِنْ آتَانَا That, O oh Allah, if you give us whatever we want, then what will we do? لَنَصَدَّقَنَّ وَلَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Ya Allah, we will give sadra, we will become pious, we will become buzruks, we will change. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives بَخِلُوا بِهِ they're very stingy, they, they retract and they oppose and they confront Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we never know the wisdom and hikmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for not giving us. Number six, that these conditions here may bring us close to Allah, which is the objective of our life. That your reward according to the difficulties and the hardships which you undergo will be more and magnified. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ إِذَا أَحَبَّ قَوْمًا إِبْتَلَاهُمْ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a certain nation, He puts them into trials, tribulations. So we don't know how long this trial and tribulation should remain with us and the hikmat and wisdom. Number seven, sometimes which we hate, may be good for us. فَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا Sometimes you dislike it. وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا But there is goodness in it. عَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ You think so it's bad but it's good for you. تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ and vice versa. Sometimes according to Ibn Qayyim when we make dua Firstly, the dua is strong and that overpowers taqdeer and it repels taqdeer. Secondly, our dua is not how it should have been done. So it's weaker than taqdeer and the destiny becomes lighter. For example, a person supposed to fall and get hurt and break a hand, he falls and gets hurt, but his hand doesn't get broken. Or thirdly, his dua and taqdeer are equal. There is an equilibrium. So it cancels each other out. It cancels each other out. So the wisdom and the hikmat of our dua not getting accepted is only in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to learn the methodology and the way to perfect our dua so that we can draw from the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said about Ibn Asham. That while he was in the path of Allah, his horse died and he said, Allahumma la tajal. Oh Allah, don't let this calamity overpower me. And I'm in your path, so help me. So Allah gave that animal life. And when he reached home and he returned from the battle, he told his son, Ya Bunayya, oh my son, take the saddle, remove everything from the horse. Because the horse is borrowed. And when his son removed everything from the horse, فَمَا Faras, The horse died. The amal for today is that Isabi asked, Ya Rasulullah, man naja, what is the way for success? He said, Amsik alayka lisanak, control your tongue, wal yasa'aka baytuk, your house should be spacious and comfortable, wabki ala khati'atik, and cry over your sons three things. On your errors, your mistakes, cry. Tuba, glad tidings for those who have these three qualities. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.